Hello guys and welcome to the part number 55 of the Node Editor tutorial series. My name is Pavel Kruplap from BlenderFree.com and today we are going to have a look on how to make the edges easy to override. So right now it's hard coded somewhere in the scene where we are trying to create directly the edge class so we are not able to actually set a different class we specify. Also if you have a look on how the class edge is written Within the edge type, we are actually instantiating these classes directly according to the edge type we provide. And if we have a look here, on the top, here we got the QDM graphic edge, and this one is perfectly fine. However, we are using the edge direct, which derives from that class, and also the QDM graphics edge Bezier, which is also deriving from that. That means that we can't change the base class or override it in a simple way since we are using these two classes anyway. So I guess there is a lesson learned from this architectural decision that is not so easy to maintain this type of structure. And at the end we are going to have a look on the node graphic view which is directly here and we are going to clean up this class a little bit so the logic of the features is going to be separate in a different files. So we can easier maintain this node graphic view which basically describes a state machine of how our node editor is behaving. So I hope you are excited and let's start coding. So the idea is to be able to override somehow the edges. So offline I did this change. From the edge type I just removed the detecting of the edge type class and move that to the determine edge class method. And moving next in the node scene there is a new get edge class method which can be easily overridden so you can provide your own edge class in your node editor. The rest is gonna be a little bit clean up so if you just wanna override the determine edge class you can and also there is a new create edge class instance which is basically taking these two lines and you can override that one. And with this setup that means that if you do want to actually change just a few parameters you can provide your own version of the node edge class. You can derive from this one and override the create edge class instance. That means that you will basically just call these two lines and then you can set up your own edge and the rest of the code will be working. If I went too quickly through these changes you can see them in the GitLab commit the link is gonna be in the description as always. Let's have a look on the graphic view. I kinda do like the idea as we have here in the constructor that we actually split the QDM cut line into a separate class so if we have a look we do have edge drag start and edge drag end. So here we are trying to handle somehow the edge dragging logic. Let's go ahead to the init function and clean it a little bit. Let's cut the cut line here and also let's go ahead and add a new class instance here which is gonna be edge dragging. So edge dragging self to dragging equals to edge dragging and let's pass in self and let's create this new class here first of all new python file let's call that one node edge dragging class edge dragging define init and pass in into the constructor the gr view and self dot gr view equals to gr view and now we do need to import that and let's go ahead to these two functions here so edge drag start and edge drag end i'm gonna cut these two just paste it directly here into the edge dragging class so we basically do need to resolve all of these missing dependencies. So let's start with them. 
to find a debug then here we got the edge and edge type Bezier however if we go up here we do see that this import is not being used anymore in the graphics view so I'm just gonna move that one okay so from node editor.utils import dump exception this is going to take care about this one we do need to have QTM graphics socket so let's copy that one okay and probably this should be everything from the imports so we do reference the self gr scene dot scene we do not have any reference to the self gr scene here so we will need to resolve this one and also there is a self mode equals to mode no operation so instead of calling that this way we can actually try to call something like self grview.reset mode and therefore we need a new method in the graphic view so let's just put it somewhere here on the top so define reset mode and we are going to have this line here okay this one should be resolved and also we are trying to instantiate edge class and therefore we made a method in the scene so let's write a helper function here also so define get edge class and we are going to return self we can go to gr view since we got the reference then we can access the graphical scene get to the actual scene and get edge class so let's just replace this one self get edge class okay let's try to find everything which start with edge and the parenthesis which is here self dot get edge class just like that okay here we are trying to access the gr scene so instead of this one we need to go to self gr view dot gr scene scene history great and we can basically do the same thing here or we can get to the scene throughout the item we passed in so if we passed in qdm graphic socket then we know that the item is gr socket so therefore we can go ahead and go to item dot socket dot node dot scene so this one should be okay and we got also here on the edge duck start the same thing so basically we can go to item socket node dot scene let's copy the name of this function and let's try to find out in the node graphic view wherever we are using this one we need to do self.dragging.edge start the same will apply here okay let's try to find the other function great dragging edge drag end dragging edge drag end which is great so let's have a look okay and here we can see that we are actually trying to access the drag edge also and update when mouse move event happens we are trying to update the destination of the drag edge so instead of this one we can actually try to type something like self dot dragging update destination and pass in the scene post.x and scene post.y just like that let me cut these lines here and let's create a new update destination paste it here x and y can be of type float i'm just gonna copy this one and move it up here and instead of 
sin plus x we can call x and sin plus y we can call y. So let's just finish the description. And this should be okay. So let's test it out. Okay, I am successfully calling the hdrag start and it looks like also the hdrag end. There is some exception which I got here. It's just this one. So in the calculator sub window, the context menu event and the target socket determine target socket of node. So I do need to also figure out or change this code. And here on this line, we just can't access the drag start socket directly. We need to go to tracking dot. Another issue is here. So tracking dot hdrag end. Let's test it again. And now it's successfully connected without any issue or error. So that means that we actually achieved to clean up the node graphic view class. So it more or less represents the state machine we are using inside of our node editor. So as you can see, we got some events going in, handling the mouse and key presses and stuff like that. And all of the functionality is actually for the features is actually located into their own separate classes. So edge tagging and QDM cut line. So if we in the future decide to extend this one, it's going to be a little bit easier. And at the end, few little changes. So I improved the middle mouse button debug again. I added a new constant called last selections. And if you hold down shift, it's gonna print out the last selected items since I was debugging that one. And also the debug printout is returning in these branches. So we are not triggering the release fake event. Moving next to the node scene. The last selected items is gonna be initialized with none instead of empty lists because most of the time we are comparing the last selected items with the current state and especially when you load up the file you are gonna retrieve that nothing is selected which is gonna be empty list. So instead of this one from the beginning let's have it on none. Moving next we got a new helper function get node by id it can be useful to retrieve a node according to the ID you put in, especially when you are handling selection. And here is on items deselected. Since I was having some troubles in my editor when I was dragging the file inside of the node editor from the outside, from the desktop especially, I was retrieving or getting the item deselected event, even though the actual selection has not changed. So just to be sure, we are asking about the current selected items and we are comparing that with the last selected items. And if that's gonna be the same, we are going to skip anything else in the method here. So otherwise we are just checking if the current selection is empty. And if it is, we are triggering or storing the history. And moving next, I fixed the redo in the scene history. We got the restore history stamp. This one is being called, everything is fine. However, if we do undo or redo and we change up the selection in the scene, we should also reset the last selected state of the scene to be able to continue without any problems and or without any bugs. And as a last one, again, I updated the documentation and increased the version. Also wrote up some comments here and there and just did a commit and published it to pip. And with these changes, we made it a little bit more easier to use. And I thank you for watching and see you at the next part.